That's right. It's episode 45. Only five more episodes to episode 50, you know, the half century mark. And, uh, you know, it's been a really great journey so far. Um, but this has also been a learning experience for us. Um, and myself and Supreme, you know, we acknowledge that the last video we released didn't um, sit well with a number of individuals. And there were some discrepancies in kind of historical accuracy and things that ultimately, you know, we need to take ownership of. We are taking ownership of, you know, the impacts that we made. Uh, although we did receive, you know, some portions of the episode, some positive feedback overall, there were sections, um, you know, that, that weren't as polished and put together with the, the right level of, I want to call it like broadcasting professionalism that, uh, you know, we should, uh, you should come to expect, you know, from us. And so um, with that, you know, being said, you know, we've taken down the episode, um, but we're uh, learning from it and appreciate, you know, the subscribers that are still here, you know, with us, um, those that continue to watch the show. And, uh, you know, this is an open forum where anyone is free to like provide their opinions or thoughts, um, you know, whether that's in public or, you know, privately, you know, we really greatly appreciate all the feedback that we receive and commend like the individuals that have provided it. So, you know, thank you so much. Uh, Supreme, did you have anything you wanted to add? Yeah, Potty, I'd like to, uh, without rehashing too much on what was said, um, I just want to throw out, me and Potty, we truly do appreciate everything that Evan does for the league and Tom and all the rest of the commissioners. It is a fantastic organization to be a part of, uh, minors and pros. Um, we all just want what's best for the league, and we all just want the league to grow. And, you know, that's that's what we're here for, to throw out these episodes for you guys. We're not here for any ill intent or to make anybody feel bad. We are one big f family here, and that's what we're trying to achieve, you know, to, to make everybody happy, make everybody comfortable, and make this a place for people to just come hang out and, you know, watch uh, reviews on, on the weekly uh, updates on goals. But yeah, with that being said, Potty, to uh, kick off episode 45, what's going on in Potty's penthouse? Yeah, getting ready for my trip to Canada coming out in July, you know, um, to Canmore, Banff, uh, Jasper, uh, Toronto, uh, Calgary as well, you know, not, um, so basically going on this big trip. So, you know, really looking forward to that. Already booked like a half day fly fishing book some restaurants along the way. If anybody's got any, uh, you know, recommendations, shout them out. Um, but it's uh, been going really well. We're really looking forward for this trip. And I know you got a big trip ahead of you. What's going, going down in Supreme Sanctuary? Well, Potty, it seems like uh, we're going to have pretty close to the same destination. Um, I am about seven days away from the big move. I have my entire apartment tore down right now. The only thing I still have up is my streaming setup here. I got my uh, game system on my on my coffee table, and I just lay on my couch and play that. Everything else is in boxes, and and then I'll be on the road. And then, uh, yeah, I think uh, Potty and I will be potentially meeting up in Calgary, I believe, at some point. So we'll see if we can uh, get a little bit of content out from that. Yeah, absolutely. We got to take advantage, get that scenic backdrop, uh, you know, feed from there. I think that'd be really sick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, let's, uh, you know, bring in, you know, what went down in the transactions this week. Um, having a trade between, uh, you know, Brooklyn Alpha Dogs trading Willie Ruth and Jim Bob. Um, actually they received, you know, Willie Ruth and Jim Bob, as well as the season eight first and second and Rome got Thomas Ferguson, uh, as well as a season eight first. Uh, so pretty, um, interesting, you know, what's that? That's like, uh, four things for two. Yeah. Four things for two. Um, but you know, 
uh, Thomas Ferguson, you know, last year when he was playing in Warsaw with me, he is a bullet on the ice. He will be the fastest guy you will see. You know, he may, I think he's a rookie this season. I'm not quite sure. Uh, he's a rookie this season, like I said, because he was playing with me last year. But uh, yeah, look for him this season and the upcoming seasons. He's a fantastic player with a good shot, good hands, and, uh, you know, never misses progression. And, uh, yeah, Thomas Ferguson is going to go uh, a long way with the Gladiators. Yes, absolutely. Ex-Warlock uh, there. Um, so then we have a, a trade from Miami uh, receiving, uh, your, not yours truly, but his is truly, you know, Omni Supreme. Um, and uh, Copenhagen received uh, Roy Kent in a pair of first-round picks. So big pickup in Miami. What, uh, what are your thoughts on this, Supreme? Yeah, it's uh, very exciting to uh, get moved over to uh, Miami. It'd be nice to uh, get the ball rolling here soon and uh, help you out as much as I can, help out the boys as much as I can. Um, you know, I'm only 70 overall. You know, I might not uh, might not look the best out there against all them big, fast, big, fast guys in the league, but uh, I'll try to do as much as I can. You know, I'll try to... Uh, but uh, it's going to be exciting. Um, it's going to be an exciting turnover to go over to Miami. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking forward to you and, uh, you know, the role that you'll play. And we'll talk more about that in the weeks to come. Uh, so then we also have a trade alert. Um, we have a fair one for one, Jake Lake for Chase Fitzpatrick. Um, so that is... What happened? The releases. We had the Brooklyn Alpha Dogs release Billy Gavin, Marco Arnotovic. Um, Mallards released Franco Fantenberg. And the Albuquerque Pharaohs and Toronto Beasts released, uh, you know, Rev Holiday. All of these for missed projections. Um, call ups came up from Bad, called up Jim Bob and the Mallards. Uh, called up Martin LaFleur. And we had a few new minor assignments going with the pod getting Ryan Davis, the Lions taking Calvin Pickle, and the Sabertooth, uh, Ed, Edouard LaFleur Tremblay um, going to Prague. And those were our uh, transactions this week. So, you know, let's uh, shift it along to the standings coming in. With the conferences, you know, we've got Las Vegas in first, you know, 18 points, only one point behind Albuquerque, a point behind. Uh, we have Tennessee, a point behind is Alaska and Manitoba that are both tied with 15. Then a point behind is Honolulu, a point behind uh, North Bay, a point behind Columbus, who are tied with Sapporo um, for 12 a pair. And then in last, we have San Diego is six, so very, um, really cool to see that, you know, how tight of a race it is over there in the rocket. Um, over on um, Mr. Hockey, we've got Florence in first with uh, 22 points. Jacksonville, four points behind them with 18. They're tied with Boston. Um, then Copenhagen has 17. And Rome with 14. Turku with 14. And then we've got Glasgow with 13, Miami with four, Brooklyn with three, and Norfolk with two. So it is a bit of a cliff. You know, you see the drop from 13 down to 4-3-1, but it's also relatively really early in the season, and there's total possibility for any three of these teams to wake up and snatch that sixth place playoff position, and that's exactly, you know, what I think is going to go down. Uh, Supreme, what's your take on these standings and goals? Yeah, the Rocket is same as last time, just as close as ever. Every team other than San Diego down at the bottom, just one point behind the next, just one, 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 and one. It's 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 crazy to see how close. You never know what's going to happen. You know, one win and one loss can just shift this thing completely up. You know, one week completely. You know, one week can can have. North Bay up in first place. If, you know, Vegas loses all their games, North Bay wins. And you know what I mean? If anything can happen over in, in the, in the hockey, you know, but over, uh, or in the rocket, I mean, 
in Mr. Hockey standings, you got Florence is still uh, ahead of the pack uh, right now. Uh, they're seeming to be a very good team this season, sitting at a goal differential of 18. Uh, Jacksonville sitting uh, right below them with four points below them with a goal differential of 19. So that just might be, you know, just a bad bounce or an unlucky, unlucky bounce for them that just might land them right there. But uh I think uh, it's going to be very interesting. The Rockets going to be, the, you know, the closest we might ever see it. And uh, Florence uh, Firebirds look like they uh, want to try to run away with it this season. Yeah, and they did suffer their first loss. Uh, we'll have to get back to you on who that was um, and why it went down. But let's talk about the divisions. Um, up first, we have none other than Atlantic, Jacksonville, 18 points, Boston, 18. So it looks like there's some, you know, pretty ahead of the pack. And then this is surprisingly where Miami, Brooklyn, and Norfolk, the other, you know, the three teams um, that are kind of suffering right now in Mr. Hockey, uh, this is the division that they all fall in. So instead of being spread across, they're all here. Um, But anything can happen throughout the uh, end of the season. Um, On Europe, you know, we've got Florence in first by a five-point margin, so that's pretty sizable, but, you know, 17 with Copenhagen behind them isn't too far out. Uh, Albuquerque winning in the central with uh, 17 points, but just one point behind Tennessee, um, and, uh, you know, a close race following them. So, again, this is the, you know, very um, competitive division And then finally, we have Pacific with Las Vegas in first. They're three points ahead of Alaska. Um, So, you know, looking at the uh, different teams, you can see that really um, Atlantic and Pacific have, you know, some of the underperforming teams right now. And the other teams that are performing well seem to be segmented into the other divisions. Um, So it's kind of an interesting dynamic. What do you think on uh, the breakdown to the divisions? Yeah, the uh, divisions are looking good, Potty. I think with the Atlantic, I can't take my eyes off that one. Uh, Boston and Jacksonville, you can't help but uh, notice they're just going to try to take advantage of this one and run away, try to separate themselves as much as they can You know, early on. Um, maybe Miami pick up, uh, pick it up after, uh, after these couple of weeks, but we'll have to see. Um, as far as the other divisions go, Potty, they're all looking... Uh, they're all looking pretty good, looking close at the tops for uh, most of them. The biggest difference, of course, would be other than, of course, uh, Atlantic would be the Europe with Florence and Copenhagen with a five-point gap. Um, mm. As far as the other two go, um, we've got a two-point gap over in the Pacific and a one-point gap in the in the Central. So, uh, you know, we're looking pretty close uh, in the Central and the Pacific. But it uh, should be an interesting uh, tight race in the divisions this year. Yes, it should be. But I wonder, what do we think is going down in the minors? Yeah, the, uh, the minors are looking good this, uh, this week. Montreal's making their way back up. Um, but Prague is still sitting there at first with uh, 14, 14 points. And Montreal just two back at 12. Chicago, they are also... Uh, trying to join the race at 10 points, just two back from Montreal. And then you got uh, Zurich tied with Chicago as well at 10 points. So that we got a double race to try to catch up to that two spot. And then we got Pittsburgh uh, trailing behind by a little bit at eight points. And then uh, Toronto, rightfully so, at the bottom with five. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm a, you know, I'm just a Montreal guy. I got to take shots on Toronto, but... You know, the miners are looking good. Uh, hopefully, you know, Montreal can uh, pull something through, get ahead of Prague. But uh, Prague is a uh, very dynamic team. It seems like every time there's a broadcast alert, they're always winning or taking down somebody and breaking dreams. So, uh, yeah, the miners are uh, so going to be a hot race right to the end this year. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So let's uh, turn our attention to the league leaders We've got Voodoo uh, taking the lead with goals of nine. Um, and then there's a, a three-way tie with eight apiece between David Leathers, Ezra Swift, and Tom Krieg. Uh, so 
great to see the uh, Maccabees represented here as well as all the other teams. Um, with the assists, we have Squibbles Kachuk um, with 10 assists. And then there's a four-way tie between C.J. Beamer, Fulton Reed, Jonathan Pendleberry, and Mojo Rising with nine apiece. So tight race over here in the assist column. And when it comes to points, um, we have Oni Escola with 15 points and Mojo Rising with 14. Um, so, you know, Turku representing on top with total points. Good for them. And at their heels, you know, Jacksonville. Um, so pretty cool breakdown of, uh, you know, the leaders. Um, let's talk about our rookies. We've got RJ Corker. Uh, with five goals, you know, leading the pack. Then right behind him, Javad Storm and Captain Burnout, each with four apiece. Then we've got Nick Abbott with six assists. And one point behind, Tom Adamo Jr., Billy Hawk, Javad Storm, Kai Williams, all with five. And when it comes to points, Javad Storm with nine. And behind him is Kai Williams uh, with eight. So uh, great performance by the rookies. Any uh, Any thoughts on these, Supreme? Yeah, the rookies this year uh, are looking good. A lot of uh, players coming out of my draft class in uh, in the points leaders here. Of course, you got Captain Burnout sitting there with uh, four goals, uh, looking to uh, lead the lead the rookies in goals this season. Um, but uh, yeah, Storm with nine points, very impressive rookie season this far. Uh, especially uh, Kai Williams as well with eight. Um, a lot, a uh, lot of uh, good showings by the youngsters this season. Yeah. Well, let's uh, turn our attention to our plays of the week. So we got these coming out at you. The first one is a monumental uh, goal that's about to go down here in Jacksonville, and this was actually uh, uh, Dog and Grimes' um, two hundredth point goal or two hundredth point. So congratulations to them. Uh, next up, we've got Norfolk against uh, Boston. Boston has the puck. And, oh, Seaback prevents the backside goal. You know, nice play right there. Next up, we've got, uh, well, you'll just have to see. falco has got the puck coming down. Gets it to Denabola, who scores. And watch this. You know, no editing of the video involved. This is happening live in simulated real time. It was Essex, Denabola, and then they're about to take the face off. Coming down. Herku wins it. But then, who's that? Denabola with the breakaway. Oh, scores again. Back to back goals. Very well done. Finally, um, we have uh, Jacksonville coming down the ice. Number 15 gets it to Eaton. Letterman, shout out. There we go. Eaton Letterman with a goal. So, Supreme, that was, uh, it was legit pretty straightforward. Um, any uh, closing thoughts for our viewers or future subscribers? Yeah, if uh, if you guys want to see any uh, special types of episodes like um, Jersey Police or anything like that, you know, let us know um, in the comments below or uh, via DM on Discord. Um, for any new viewers, if you've made it this far into the video, you know, the disc our Discord channel will be down in the links below. Um, but. Uh, yeah, if you guys, uh, any feedback or, uh, you know, anything at all, just shoot us a message. And uh, we very much appreciate everybody that uh, watches these videos and subscribes. And, uh, you know, we're just going to try to do our best for you guys. Absolutely. Coming in next time. Mm -hmm.